I have been asked to use English to avoid any language barrier, uh, so that I will do. It's a tremendous honor to be here today, uh, and I'm very happy to be able to address to you the topic of adverse health effects of radiation from mobile phones and wireless networks. Um, right now in Sweden, there is a huge billboard campaign where uh, we are trying to save the Baltic Sea cod and Per Moberg, who is a famous Swedish actor and chef, he says, so what is it our politicians have such a hard time to understand? I don't think that's a fair question. The politicians I have met throughout the years, they do understand if they are given the proper and correct facts. You, and I count you as politicians here, you are the elected representatives here in Denmark, and I, as your employed scientist, we are not here to promote convenience or economic growth, but only to serve and protect human health and biological safety, as well as to protect other animals, plants and bacteria. These aims must be our only target. From the current vast scientific literature, it is obvious we must proceed with caution before immersing the citizens in more and more artificial electromagnetic fields. We may, as a matter of fact, already be gravely endangering our current as well as coming generations. To not act today may prove a disaster tomorrow, and such lack of action may again result in the classical late lessons from early warnings. As you know, the World Health Organization has cancer classified both power frequent magnetic fields, which is a long word for ordinary household electricity, as well as all forms of radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possible, uh, possibly carcinogenic. And to add to that, and I know Lena Tardell will cover this in much more detail, and recently the American National Toxicology Program has demonstrated brain and heart tumors in rats and mice after exposure to mobile phone radiation. Already 2011, May 6, the Council of Europe suggested that we should ban mobile phones and wireless networks in schools. And the Council of Europe concluded that immediate action was required to protect children. You should ask yourself what your government and parliament did at that time. In Sweden, they did nothing. And it's very interesting, and it's very hard to use this. You don't see it, but, no, sorry. Um, there. At the bottom, you see, we put our children in an exposure from radio frequency electromagnetic fields that the World Health Organization has classified in the same category such as DDT, lead, formaldehyde, petrol and diesel exhausts, and welding smoke. This is a paradox. I tell you, if this room was filled with petrol and diesel exhausts, you would leave it. You would never put children in this room. But actually you are, but the petrol and diesel exhaust is instead the radio frequency fields. And you buy them gadgets and you give them in Christmas presents and so on, something that has been cancer classified. That is a paradox. Swedes and Danes, we love our children. Uh, we put on reflective vests, protective helmets, bicycle helmets, colorful overalls, but when it comes to effects of radiation, they are completely naked. Again, a paradox. So what can we now learn from science? Well, I cannot use this pointer, so you have to try to follow me. But very early to the right, we showed at the Karolinska Institute a dramatic increase in so-called mast cells in the skin of electrohypersensitive people with a functional impairment we call electrohypersensitivity. Later on, if you look on C and D, we could show in normal healthy volunteers an increase in the very same cell types when they were exposed to ordinary household television sets and ordinary household computer screens. And you should remember that the mast cells are the key cells for asthma, allergy and other oversensitivities. And in Scandinavia, as elsewhere, we have a dramatic increase in these diseases to late years and decade. And 
a colleague to me, Hajime Kimata in Japan, has shown that atopic eczemas, they grew worse when they were exposed to microwave radiation from mobile phones. Again, pointing to, this is not good for you. Use of cell phones decreased the semen, the sperm cell quality in men. Greek scientists have shown a progressive decrease in the number of newborns, and it ended in complete irreversible infertility in the fifth generation. So maybe here in Denmark and Copenhagen, your grand, 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 grandchildren will not be able to get children because of something you did to them now. Exposure of pregnant women to mobile phones significantly increased fetal and neonatal heart rate and significantly decreased the cardiac output. In layman terms, that means that the babies were stressed. When I ask Swedish parents, do you want to have babies that are stressed when they are newly born? No one, not even from the telecom industry, says, yes, that's exactly what I want to have. They say, no, 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 what's that? Well, look here. That's the results on science. Henry Lai and his co-workers have showed retarded learning in rats. And similar studies have been done in boys showing the same. They did less well in a linguistic test when they were double-blind coded, exposed to mobile phone radiation. In layman terms, they were dumbed down. Is that what you want to have in your schooling system? Of course not. Other scientists like Boss and Odachi, and they are super, super elegant studies. They have shown dramatic effects in the hippocampus of the brain, even cell death in the pyramidal cells. And that specific area is the area that is responsible for short-term memory, concentration capacities, and similar things you use for learning. Very elegant study, and also published in high-impact journals like Brain Research and stuff like that. I have studied a lot the immune system, and to make a long story short, it's obvious that the immune system tries to fight the exposures, but after some time it deteriorates and it starts to leak. It's tempting again to think about, for instance, allergies, asthmas, and other oversensitivities, which like a rocket is increasing in countries all over the world. Maybe the most serious effect is still the genotoxic one. Uh, the microwaves from, uh, and I'm sorry I cannot use this pointer, but you see, uh, they exposed cells, they looked at the DNA molecule, they exposed them for 24 hours at an exposure value, which is 1.3 watts per kilogram, called the SAR value. And here in Denmark, you're supposed to withstand two watts per kilogram. So it was quite all right. And after 24 hours, they saw a fragmentization, a damage to the DNA molecule. If mobile phones um, and, and the tablets, uh, wireless internet would have been a food item or a cosmetic, it would not have been allowed to be disseminated among the general population because all countries have said that genotoxic effects are not allowed to be spread in the population. But there is an exception for wireless telecommunication for some strange reason. Also, I said that the exposure values were quite all right. And very many scientists have shown effects at much lower, very much lower, and very, very, very much lower exposure levels. Meaning that the guidelines you use in Denmark do not protect you or your children at all. And therefore, talking about safety, many years ago, if you look at the bottom, I said 1997, it's time to introduce a genuine hygienic safety value, and I suggested that we should use the natural background. And here in Denmark, the level you are supposed to withstand, which is supposed to be okay, is one quintillion times higher. That's a one and 18 zeros 
times the natural background. And with all due respect, most of you are older. When you were born, you were born into the natural background, but now you live in a quintillion times higher or something similar to that. Does that make you feel safe? Plants are affected, a very famous study. And here the model was tomato plants, and it was demonstrated that the mobile phone radiation uh, damaged the tomato plants as if they were crushed by a hammer. Quite tough exposure effects. And maybe this study is the one that scares me the most. It's from 2017, it's by Tahirian co-workers. They exposed bacteria. Not very much happened. Apart from one little thing, they came out antibiotic resistant. Already today, more than 25,000 Europeans die prematurely because of antibiotic resistance. It has been calculated by 2050, all over the world, it will be 10 million or more that die beforehand because of antibiotic resistance. And then this study is not included in that calculation. So maybe the 10 million will be 100 million or more. If I was the prime minister of Denmark or Sweden, I wouldn't sleep. I would be up in my bed screaming. But what are we doing about it and what are others up to? Very early, even before you were born, in 1983, I coined an expression that many people have used. I said, this is the largest full-scale experiment ever. What happens when we, 24 hours around the clock, wherever we are, allow ourselves and our children to be used as guinea pigs, whole body irradiated, and as you saw at colossal exposure levels for the rest of our lives. Few people have tried to answer that question. And you see from the years, I've been kept ranting and ranting and ranting. And now it's 2018 in Copenhagen. I hope this is the last time I have to put this question. But I'm afraid it will not be. So maybe I will be back 2019, 2020, and so on, you know. You cannot kill me. I will live forever, you know. <laughs> Also in the London Resolution 2009, uh, myself and, and the co-workers at that time, um, we pointed to that we have to use the United Nations precautionary principle. And we said that we proposed that children under 16 should use mobile phones and cordless phones for emergency calls only. No wireless uh, systems like Wi-Fi, Wi-Max, uh, or other web networking are placed in homes schools or public areas. Do you know what happened in Sweden when we published this paper? Nothing. I hope more happened here in Denmark. Uh, and I hope you really listen to the message here. Some countries have actually listened very much. And uh, countries like Nigeria, Solomon Islands, Uganda, Malaysia, Indonesia, and a few more, they have bans on um, um, phones inside and outside of schools. So they have really gone to quite an extreme measure. They want to protect the children. But at the bottom I have written in yellow, but where are Sweden and Denmark in this? Shouldn't we be at the forefront? We are so famous for this kind of protective measures. You remember all the reflective vests and bicycle helmets and all of that. But suddenly, we are not. And I'm sort of prejudiced here. I didn't expect Sweden and Denmark to be outrun by the Solomon Islands and Uganda. But we are. We have to face it. We are. And finally, you can ask the final question. Wireless gadgets, are they safe? And I say, do not believe that mobile phones, iPads, and Wi-Fi are safe. They are not. And as you soon will see, the major players, and they are not even here today in our society, already know it. These gadgets and their electromagnetic fields interfere with normal brain function, learning and memory, fertility, cancer risks, and have been shown to shatter the DNA in cells. All of this can be found in scientific journals, but until now has not been in the public domain. One more. 
uh, what are these powerful players? And you know, if you don't trust me, and that's all right, trust these, because they know what they're doing, because they handle money. The World Health Organization, the Radiation Protection Authorities, the telecom operators, the telecom manufacturers, the insurance and reassurements have all listened very carefully and years and years ago completely abandoned the safe ship. They do not in any form take any form of responsibility or liability for this. And therefore, when in doubt, always follow the money. Don't bother about me, don't listen to me, just listen to them. And maybe the answer to my question here in uh, Denmark, Copenhagen today is, maybe the only correct answer is, no more full-scale experimentation at all until the above big players climb on board again to cover any form of future legal liability claims. So is time gone. <laughs> tremendous plant which you can see here at the botanical have in Copenhagen uh, and on these lists of the uh, World Health Organization they are very long and they contain a lot of different exposures and some of them are um, associated with very rare tumor forms and I have to be honest I'm not an expert on aloe vera and which tumor it could be but maybe Lennart knows because as I say the lists are very wrong but more importantly they have a category 4 proven non-carcinogenic so if they had thought that for instance mobile phone radiation definitely was safe they could have could categorized it as number four, which they didn't. And as Lennart pointed out too, there will be a re-evaluation soon, and uh, most likely they will shift from 2B to 2A, or even maybe to 1, which is the highest level, and we don't know that yet. Uh, so it will be a very interesting phenomenon. And of course, it all goes back to that the World Health Organization, as you know, is a UN entity and it could be put to a legal trial, even the civil servants working at the UN, and therefore they are always very keen on protecting their backs, because in the future, if it turns out that a lot of people, as you say, being exposed, a lot of people getting brain tumors or heart tumors, and people are getting angry and say, why didn't you tell me? Then the World Health Organization, as I pointed as a big player, can say, we did. We cancer classified already 2011. Didn't you read it? Så er spørgsmål nede fra salen. Jeg har stadigvæk et par folketingsmedlemmer på, og vi har 13 minutter tilbage. Ole, du har også et svar. Um, I didn't quite get uh, your comment. I'm sorry for the language barrier, but I think you were pointing to confounders of various sorts. And of course, you need to do controlled experiments to really pinpoint. And such has been done in an extreme extent. There is so many pieces in this jigsaw puzzle, but of course, maybe you need more before you dare to act and it's up to you to decide of course uh, about the uh, sperm quality in europe for instance it's dramatically lowered some countries are really uh, facing a scary situation for instance the health minister of italy already four or five years ago said that in about 50 years time no more italians will be born only um, immigration will uphold the population because the sperm quality is dramatically reduced. Uh, then you asked about skin cancers. We have studied here in Denmark, for instance, malignant melanomas, which is the most rapidly increasing from an incidence point of view cancer form, and it is, um, increases like 5-6% per year. And we could see a very strong association to body resonant uh, frequencies, uh, that is FM radio. Uh, it's of course a uh, 
model based on ecology and epidemiology. We would need to do more experiments, detail such. But the problem in Sweden has been for decades that when we asked for the necessary money, no one wanted to give it to us. And finally, you said something very important in the beginning. You said that världen förändras varje dag. Today in Sweden, the premier news is something that overrides this discussion today. The Gulf Stream is slowing down. So it's changing, yes. Super. Det förändras, och vi har stadigvæk to på talerlisten. Fleming, værsgod. Mange tak, og jeg vil sige tak til jer alle sammen for meget fine og respektfulde præsentationer. Det har været rigtig dejligt. Jeg vil også give formanden ret i, at det kunne have været rigtig godt her.